Hello, this was first recorded as a live demonstration of the Hardware Management Console 780 Enhanced Plus. It was a two hour session. We've now decided to cut this down into 10 shorter demos for easy consumption with an introduction. You're currently watching the introduction, what's new in the HMC, as of the third quarter of 2017. So I'm Nigel Griffiths, working Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in IBM Europe. In the rest of the session we'll be looking at the HMC version 870, it's uh, about to hit the streets and in particular it's only going to have the Enhanced Plus graphical user interface so we thought it would be a good idea to give you a live demo of a graphical user interface having the screenshots can make it very dull and you're not actually seeing what's going on when a live demo can show you a lot more. First we've got a couple of slides as an update of what's going on in HMC land. Um, soon we're going to have a HMC running a Power 8 server. Now a lot of the older Power guys have uh, pulled our legs about, um, isn't it a bit odd that you're running an Intel machine to control a beautiful Power massive boxes? And uh, the answer is, well yes it was, uh, but now we're going to actually do something about that. So we're going to use a, a Power 8 uh, server to actually be a replacement for the Intel uh, server that is used for the HMC. It's going to have um, more CPU, 6, it's going to have 32 gigabytes of RAM, a couple of disks in there, so it will actually be much more powerful than the Intel server. The Power 8 chip's roughly twice the speed of a, an Intel chip. Then um, we're actually going to be using a special version of the Power 8 S821LC. It's internally is known as a Super Micro Straton, it's a, a one u server. It's actually going to be a, a different uh, machine type model, so it's going to be a specific model for running the Power8 HMC software. It'll be simple to install and uh, remote start-stop is possible using the BMC processor, that's what we'd call a service processor in that particular machine, and we can do remote uh, login and power up and power off using IPMI tool. Now I actually have some other videos and blogs showing you the Stratton machine. It's going to look uh, just about exactly the same. It's a little bit something different on the front, um, but uh, it's basically the same box. But you'll have to buy a specific HMC appliance to actually run the software. Also, like the Intel, it's had for quite a while a virtual HMC where you supply uh, KVM, Zen, or VMware a uh, virtual machine in which you run the software. Well now we could be able to do that so that in a Power 8 virtual HMC you'll be using Power VM with a logical partition and in that you can put the uh, software. Now you still have to purchase the uh, software but uh, you don't have to purchase the, the hardware to go along with it. Um, obviously you can't manage the server you're actually on. If you're in an LPAR there's that sort of fundamental bootstrap problem. If you have a power outage um, you you can't get the LPAR running to power up the machine. Uh, so you can only use it to power up uh, manage other machines than the one is actually on. Okay, now there's a bunch of questions whenever we mention this uh, new Power 8 HMC. First of all, mixed um, Intel and Power is okay if you've got one Intel based HMC and one Power based HMC. They'll, they'll work into work uh, quite happily. The um, Stratton machine um, has a quirk with it that uh, it doesn't install into an IBM T42 rack or any rack with uh, round holes rather than square. Seems very strange in 2017 about worrying about the size or shape of the hole. Um, but with the Power 8 HMC appliance you can optionally buy a little converter uh, to, so that it will actually fit in a T42 rack. Okay. The the Intel HMC appliance is still going to be available for quite a long time. I haven't though seen a follow-on, and I, I think we'll be encouraging everybody if you buy a new HMC, buy the Power 8 HMC. I, I haven't seen any f uh, hard prices, but I'm told it will be roughly about the same. So it'll be no question of whether do you want a, a slow Intel or a fast power one. Well, you just go for the fast power one, and it's the sort of machine that we know and love anyway. Right, now on the software side, um, currently if you're up to date you'll be running HMC 860 um, which runs on the uh, Intel of course, it runs uh, for controlling uh, the Power 6, 7 and 8 and that runs the classic graphical user interface and the Enhanced Plus and that's available for uh, another year and a half or so um, so there's no you know, immediate deadline you, you've got to hit and, and move on. 
the HMC 870 software is coming out soon. That runs on Intel All Power, as we've been describing, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, and that supports the same Power 6, 7, and 8. It only has the Enhanced Plus graphical user interface, and that will be supported for the, the, the regular two years or whatever it is. Um, one thing to note there that the command line is not going to change. Um, so I've actually seen the, the actual manuals. I think there's three or four commands have an extra parameter, but it means that all your software and scripts that you've got that use that remotely uses the command line, uh, that's all going to work quite happily. And there's a couple of key features that everybody asks about. Uh, for example, well, the Enhance Plus doesn't have the system plan, so you can't release that then. And the answer is, well, it will do. The 870 fills up those little holes of uh, features that it didn't have that the classic did and so we can remove the classic at that point now in the future let's say we had a machine sort of called a power 9 perhaps um, well that will have you running power 9 firmware and there'll be a matching power 9 something um, into a version and that uh, will run on Intel and on power um, but it will be controlling the, the last three power computers. So it will be power 7, 8 and 9. So the power 6 support won't be there. So maybe you want to keep some of your older HMCs to, to control lots of uh, power 6 machines if you still have them. It will be enhanced plus only and it will be supported for even further into the future. So if you're thinking about buying a Power 9 machine in the end of the year, let's say, then it'd be a good time if you're going to buy a HMC to buy the Power 8 HMC once it's out. But I'm not going to cover any more details, just giving you insight of what's what's the outlook for in the future for the software side of the HMC. Now the Enhanced Plus has been uh, uh, a long time coming. It's actually been out four or five releases now sure in the early days um, it was just a sort of technical go and have a look at it excuse us what do you think and it was a little bit slow in the 860 in particular the performance has gone way up to anything you've seen before and in a session on the airx virtual user group uh, mr hmc himself was, everybody calls him ashok and he says that's fine uh, gave a like 10 minute uh, discussion of why we're doing the Enhanced Plus. And there's a whole bunch of reasons. It's not just IBM thing, well, we like to muck about our customers, so here's a new version of something. It's actually done by a lot of research, a lot of talking to customers, a lot of watching customers and techies make mistakes on the HMC or complain that this test takes too long to do things. And that's so we've come up with the Enhanced Plus interface. So it should let you get things done faster, uh, less error prone, particularly those virtual slot numbers I mean largely a waste of time in my humble opinion um, if we never told you about them you'd never know and you never worry about them but I, I've sat on uh, client uh, discussions of the virtual slot numbering committee and you just have to think this is just a waste of time and I really think that is so it's a good move that we're moving away from that removing some of the unneeded complexity in here more informative about what's going on you can see a lot more on one page we can do things like live changes we've made it so that the virtual IO server you don't have to log into it practically ever I mean occasionally you might want to do something on most things that you want to do you can just work on HMC and it will go and change things on the VO server when necessary and it will get them right first time certainly better for, for newbies that are trying to do things and as I said lots of research gone into producing this new version the new paradigm of how you should operate power machines also that new features have been added to the enhanced plus uh, only uh, and they don't work with the classic uh, interface things like templates and network diagrams performance graphs and uh, shared storage pool details and, and a whole bunch more there's uh, lots of new features that we couldn't fit into the old I used to call it the clinky classic uh, spreadsheet mode of, of operating which is now quite old to be honest Right, now personally I've been using the Enhanced Plus for around about 18 months. It's faster, it's better, it's friendly, and I never use this clunky classic anymore. In fact, I struggle now when I go back to it, because it, and it's so sort of strange and slow and pedestrian to get things done. The uh, HMC GUI interface for Enhanced Plus um, performance has been drastically improved. So try it in the 860 version um, or the 870 when that becomes out uh, later on. 
Um, if it's slow, then you need to raise a PMR. Just don't get uh, annoyed. Don't just uh, start phoning IBMers or talking to your salesperson. Raise a PMR. There's probably a good reason why it's running slow. Uh, it may be the HMC hardware or software, or you're doing things that you shouldn't do. Uh, maybe your network needs a fix. I think it uses a bit more network traffic, so that might be a problem. Uh, you might find your workstation is so old that it can't handle the, the new way of doing things. Maybe the browser actually has a problem as well. You need to upgrade that. But we'll work with you and, and fix those problems. Now, in my live demo, then, I'm actually using the Power 8. HMC uh, running on a genuine Straton that's not officially supported but well that's what we're doing in beta testing I'm actually using a beta version of the 870 software and we've been doing that for I think two months now and it is rock solid I mean okay there can be a little a few artifacts on the screen now and again and we've raised uh, bug reports for those but uh, nothing seriously is actually wrong with this at all but then it's been around four or five years, right? So it doesn't surprise us, does it really? Um, I'm doing it remotely over the internet. My computer room is about 15 miles away, but I think my packets are doing about 300 miles back and, and forth. I'm using a regular uh, Lenovo ThinkPad with Windows 7 and a Chrome browser. Nothing, nothing strange there. Uh, I'm going to cover a tour of the general user interfaces and the bits of the HMC that I always use all the time. I'm going to cover some specific uh, user tasks and advanced features. Hopefully this will get you off to flying start when you move over to Enhance Plus. I'm not covering um, all the HMC classics. Sometimes you, you click a button on the Enhance Plus version, and it brings up the panel just as it is in the HMC Classic version. I'm going to say, okay, from here you should know what you're doing, so I'm not going to cover it in any more details. This isn't a how do you run the HMC class, this is a how do you operate and uh, get the best out of the Enhance Plus graphical user interface. Now, if I tried to actually click on every single button and every single uh, menu option, we'd be here for about 80 hours rather than eight hours, certainly a lot longer than the hour and a half that we've allocated here. And I'm not going to re respond to requests like, I, I want to see SRIOV or something or other, because that's just the way that demos go horribly wrong at that point, and I'll just be wasting your time trying to remember why I am on the wrong machine, and that's why there isn't an SRIOV adapter in it. There's a whole bunch of uh, screen dumps, uh, 70 slides in the uh, the pack, and you can download that uh, later. And um, I'm actually using my slides to actually remember where I want to go and what I want to point out. I've got a lot of comments on my copy. Well, that's it for the introduction. Now you need to go and find part one, logging in, information sources, and about.